My bottle has four seals on the bottom, touting prizes won in spirits competitions, whereas the older ones only have three. Hello and welcome to My Tiny Bottles, the project where I'm exploring my grandmother's legacy of miniature liquor bottles, one tiny bottle at a time. I'm your host, Tammy Coxon. Bottle number 86 is Luxusowa Vodka from Poland. As was apparent in Reveal 17, where I was very much not excited to discover this bottle in Grandma's collection, I'm not a huge vodka fan. And last but definitely not least, vodka. Well, maybe it is least. I like spirits and liqueurs because the flavors are so interesting. But most of the time with vodka, flavor is not the point. But I also like spirits and liqueurs because they have fascinating stories. And on that score, vodka doesn't disappoint. Both Russia and Poland claim to have been the first to distill something called vodka. And short of inventing a time machine, we're not going to be able to resolve that claim to anyone's satisfaction. But we do know that by the early 1500s, it was being produced in both countries. In 1580, the town of Poznan in Poland had 498 working distilleries. What they were making wouldn't have tasted much like today's vodka, though. Today, vodka is defined by its purity and is produced by distilling a fermented liquid to at least 95% alcohol by volume. Back then, the technology to make that possible was still hundreds of years away. Using triple distillation, they could produce a spirit that was at most 75-80% to 80 ABV, similar to a modern white whiskey, which would then be diluted before sale. Since my tiny bottle is Polish, I'm going to focus on their story. In the 16 and 1700s, Polish vodka was being exported all over Europe, including the Netherlands, Denmark, England, Russia, Germany, and Austria. The hundreds of small distilleries from the 1500s gradually consolidated and fewer larger producers began to dominate. This was especially the case beginning in the mid-1600s, when the nobility were given the exclusive rights to produce vodka in their territories. And to pocket all the proceeds, of course. The first truly industrial distillery in Poland opened in 1782. It wouldn't be until 1871 that distilling technology had advanced far enough to produce clear vodkas that came close to matching today's standards. With those improvements came a system for grading vodkas according to their purity and characteristics. Zwickli was standard common vodka. Vibarova meant choice, and at the top of the heap was Luxasova, or luxury vodka. While those grading standards aren't used anymore, they live on in the names of Polish vodka brands still today. This includes my tiny bottle of Luxasova, which means luxurious. Luxasova claims to have been in continuous production since 1928, but the word continuous there is a bit of a stretch. By that time, vodka making in Poland was the responsibility of a government-run monopoly, which had been established in 1919. After World War II, the communist government further consolidated the spirits industry, creating an entity called Polmos and putting all distillation in the hands of only six distilleries. In addition, there were 19 compounders who would blend and bottle the raw spirits produced by the distilleries. So Luxusova from this time could have been produced by any of them. And while all the locations of Polmos were supposed to be following the same recipes, some were just better than others. So people would seek out their preferred product from whichever Polmos they thought made it best. As I mentioned in my episode about Bottle 47, the Polish cherry liqueur Vishniak, this system changed after the fall of communism. After 1989, Polmos locations were privatized and the brands were distributed between them. Luxoxova went to the one located in Zielona Gora, where it's still made today, and is now owned by Pernod Ricard. Luxoxova began being imported into the U.S. around 1987. Ads from that time show similar looking bottles to mine, with one big difference. My bottle has four seals on the bottom, touting prizes won in spirits competitions, whereas the older ones only have three. The last of those wins was in Athens in 1988, so that gives us a good start date for this bottle. Then, in 2002, the label was changed so the seals were stacked vertically, which means my bottle is most likely from the 1990s. By then, vodka was already the best-selling spirit in America and continuing its rise, helped along by the end of the Cold War and opening of trade with Eastern European vodka-producing nations like Poland. This one is 100% potato vodka. In my experience, a lot of people think that vodka is usually made with potatoes, but in fact, it's always been much more common to make it from various kinds of grain. 
The technology to make vodka from potatoes wasn't even in place until the beginning of the 1800s. But it did revolutionize the industry and became particularly associated with Polish vodka. And while I'm not a vodka fan, I have liked the potato vodkas I've tried more than some others, so I'm actually looking forward to trying this one. Are you a vodka fan? Tell me about your favorite in the comments. Hit subscribe while you're there and don't forget to like and share. You can also find me on social media as at my tiny bottles on Instagram and Facebook and at Tammy LC on Blue Sky. Find out more about this bottle and all the bottles at mytinybottles.com and check out my Patreon for bonus content. Cheers!